Jason. Here's a look at what's going on this week in the news. We begin with news from the Vatican. During an audience with a delegation of the Anti-Defamation League, Pope Francis told them that anti-Semitism is absolutely contrary to Christianity and the church has a duty to denounce and repel such hatred. Pope Francis added that there are no words that could ever adequately address the horrors of cruelty and sin of the Holocaust. There is only one prayer, the Pope said, that God may have mercy and that such tragedies may never happen again. Pope Francis encouraged the delegates to continue their work, knowing that the best remedies against the rise of hatred consist in making available the means necessary for a dignified life in promoting culture and favoring religious freedom everywhere, as well as in protecting believers and religions from every form of violence and exploitation. In news from around the world, a Vatican summit on organ trafficking this past week brought together government ministers, judges, law enforcement personnel, medical professionals, human rights activists and journalists representing more than 50 nations. One of the purposes of the summit was to build an alliance from all over the world to encourage each other to put pressure on their own nations to implement, implement measures to stop organ trafficking and transplant tourism. Rome Reports has more on the gathering. For the first time in history, the Vatican has organized a meeting to address the obscure organ trafficking and transplant tourism in more than 50 countries from around the world. This is another form of modern slavery that Pope Francis is determined to denounce. Thus, he himself asked the Pontifical Academy of Sciences to organize the Congress. It is part of what the Pope has asked for, and fortunately the Academy is a doctor very interested in the subject. The difference between this traffic and other trafficking is that it cannot be done without the doctor's hands, without the doctors. Therefore, the doctors know the situation well. The Congress has had an impact on the need to involve doctors in denouncing possible cases and to reinforce their ethical codes. The problem is very serious because it is about the exploitation of the person, the dignity of the person. I would call it a crime against humanity. There is growing awareness of the seriousness of trafficking human body parts. For example, in China, past governments have authorized the use of the organs of executed prisoners. Fortunately, it is a practice that is no longer performed, and its ban was applauded by the Vatican. In fact, one of the leaders of the Chinese government in the matter, Jiefu Huang, attended this meeting. They are small steps towards the normalization of relations between the Vatican and China. This is a very important international meeting because of the noble identity of the you know, Pope Francis. I'm a surgeon, so I know nothing about the diplomacy. <laughs> and so, however, probably this is also an uh, indication Chinese people and, uh, wish to improve relations with the Vatican. The data speaks for itself. A Pakistani can sell a kidney for $2,000, and that same kidney will cost $80,000 in the United States. The biggest victims of this sinister business are the marginalized. Signatories to the final statement approved 11 recommendations, which included the defining of the use of organs from executed prisoners and payments to donors as crimes that should be condemned worldwide and legally prosecuted at the national and international level. According to the World Transplantation Register in 2015, over 119,000 organs were transplanted worldwide. The World Health Organization estimates that each year 10,000 of these transplants are performed illegally. In other news around the world, according to the news agency Fides, a member of the Franciscan Sisters of Mary Immaculate was taken by armed men in Karangasso village in Mali near the Burkina Faso border. Armed men broke into the parish on February 7th and grabbed Sister Gloria Cecilia Navez Argate and took off in an ambulance that belonged to the church. According to a French news agency, two suspects in the kidnapping were arrested while heading to Burkina Faso in the ambulance. The 56-year-old sister Narvaez was one of four sisters living in Carangasso and was the only one abducted. Father Edmund Dembele, Secretary General of Mali Bishops Conference, told Fides that the area where Sister Narvaez was kidnapped is usually a quiet area of the country that has not yet been touched by the insecurity that affects other areas of Mali. And finally in the news, the Pope's Lenten message has been announced for 2017. It was revealed at a Vatican press conference by a woman who ministers to the poor and those on the margins of society. Rome Reports has more from the Vatican. Pope Francis has called again for the end of indifference towards those who suffer. He does so in this year's Lenten message entitled, 
The word is a gift. Other persons are a gift. The Pope recalls the parable of the rich man who despises poor Lazarus. From it, he says that a right relationship with people consists in gratefully recognizing their value. And each life that we encounter is a gift deserving acceptance, respect, and love. For Pope Francis, the problem of the rich man is not his money, but that he has closed his heart to God and therefore cannot see others as a gift. I think the Pope is putting his finger on this fundamental choice, whether life is viewed as an extension of oneself or as an opening of oneself to others. For over 20 years now, every day I see Jesus go among the poor and I see paralytics that rise. I mean paralytics in the heart, wounded in the heart. I see young people with destroyed heart and these wounds are cured by the one who is love. I believe that this is the most beautiful result of receiving the word and receiving others. The Vatican invited Chiara Amirante to present the Pope's message. She's an Italian woman who decided to go to the most difficult areas of Rome to help the poor, where she discovered that the greatest poverty was not just material. When I started going to the street at night, I was a young girl. It was clear that I was afraid, because in any case, going to Termini Station, where there was all kinds of violence, trafficking of all kinds, immigrants who came with many good intentions to find work often ended in organized crime. Obviously, there was the fear. But to listen to the cry of another makes you enter on tiptoe in their world. It makes you change your attitude. Then it moves from fear to the urgency of finding an answer together. She founded New Horizons, a Catholic community that offers a healing process for the deepest wounds of the soul. They have more than 200 centers of welcome and formation, 30,000 volunteers, and more than half a million people committed to living the gospel to change the world. And that is all the information we have for you this time. Tim and Nelson, don't forget, you can keep up to date on Catholic news throughout the week with Catholic News Break right here on the Catholic TV Network.